friend of mine, uh, I mentioned earlier in the show that he, uh, when he was a young teenager, he worked for uh, the re-election campaign. He's a Republican, and so are members of his family. But they used to work for the election campaigns of Frank Grizzo, who was a Democrat, a one-time police chief and later mayor of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, he just sent me some more links to what's going on in that city where the police officers who work there. And they are being charged with keeping order, as were police in Cleveland, Ohio. And frankly, I think that police in Cleveland, well, tip of the hat to them because (laughs) all those worries about rioting and violence and everything else, it was pretty tame when, when you look at what happened there over the last several days. But in Philadelphia, and we shared a clip yesterday when Tim Miller was here, uh, captain from the uh, Twin Falls County Sheriff's Department about the Fraternal Order of Police in Philadelphia, absolutely enraged because Hillary Clinton has invited family members who's who, who lost family in shootings that came from police officers. That is, uh, were shot dead by police. Okay, let's make that clear. I don't want to, you know, you got to be plain language here. Shot dead by police. She's inviting members of those families to speak at the, the Democrat National Convention of all places in Philadelphia. So, you know, one of Mike Brown's relatives will be there. But he he tried to take a policeman's gun away and punch the police officer. Even Barack Hussein Obama's Justice Department found that to be true. Hands up, don't shoot was nothing but a bunch of baloney. It was a lie being perpetrated by people who don't like police in Mike Brown's neighborhood, as well as perpetrated by police, uh, by uh, people rather, who don't like police in in media. And it spread, you know, you had, you had the hags over at uh, The View who were repeating that. You had sports teams repeating that. And then they wonder why police may not show up to protect them in certain certain venues. Huh. Well, in Philadelphia, the police are saying, you know what? All right, why not at least balance it? This is, they're trying to be understanding. All right, so you've got people who are going to be coming who, who, who are going to claim that police were bad and they just set out because, you know, police officers get up in the morning and think, <laughs> I wonder how many black folks I can kill today. <laughs> so I post last night on Facebook from a friend of mine who's been a policeman for 29 years and says, I never once got up in the morning and went into a neighborhood and thought I'm going to go in there and kill somebody. Never looked forward to it. He said, in fact, I usually go and sing a prayer. Uh, asking that, please, God, help all of this get settled and, you know, everyone can walk away from whatever dispute we've got and we can all go home to our families at the end of the evening. But police in Philadelphia say nobody at the DNC has invited any family members of fallen officers. That is, officers who were shot dead. In other words, nobody, no, no young child who lost a dad in Baton Rouge last weekend or in Dallas the week before has been invited to that convention. And it, 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 you know, if the Democrats think that the police in Philadelphia, and then you know what, here's the thing. The police in Philadelphia will not shirk their duty. They'll still go out there, and if there are any demonstrations and any problems, they will take care of business. But it doesn't mean they're going to like taking care of business. And once you go, or here you go again, somehow the Democrats feel that they are going to get more votes from a bunch of dope dealers in various inner-city neighborhoods versus regular Americans who respect the law, and that somehow the dope dealer vote is going to put them over the top in November. Now, I might be stretching things here just a bit, but a lot of these people who were shot by police officers were doing bad things. Some of them are dope dealers. Some of them decided that they were going to fight with the police. There's a, there's a, you know, the Washington Post keeps a database of all of the police-involved shootings since Mike Brown in in Ferguson, Missouri. And they don't necessarily make a distinction in their database over whether these shootings were provoked. The latest thing is this video out of Florida where this man uh, went out to get one of his patients who was autistic, who was sitting on a street and was trying to get him back inside the facility. Somebody said there's a man in the street with a gun. Well, the autistic man had a toy truck with him. Police came along and didn't know what to make of it, so they said, well, you know, hands up and down on the ground. And you see the guy talking with police as he's he's sort of semi on his back with his hands up. And supposedly he was shot. Well, he was shot. I mean, I'm not saying supposedly in that sense. Yet finding out who shot him may be a little more difficult because there was a video posted by some neighbors who were watching all of this. And you can hear them talking and, you know, 
they, they, they let it be known that they're black people and they thought that this guy was shot on the street simply because he was black. But the video was posted to the internet and I was looking at it. Here's a funny thing. You don't actually see the guy being shot. What they did is they cleverly edited the video. You see the guy with his hands up and he's talking to police who are out of the picture. And then it goes to black and there are some words that pop up on the black screen saying, and he ended up being shot by these police officers. And then we resume the video and the video shows the man wounded on the street. He was shot in one of his legs, wounded on the street while the police are tending to him. Well, why did they edit out the actual shooting? Because did he do something that provoked the police? Well, we don't know, because that part of the video is not making air. Huh. Well, if we could see the whole video, perhaps it would shed a different light on this story, now would it? Well, that's why we're not seeing the whole video. 76. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 20 minutes away from 10 o'clock. We've got a few more minutes of the program left. Hope you can stick around. Stretch run, and then it's my weekend. And by the way, I have an abbreviated week next uh, next week. I will be working Monday through Thursday, and then Steve Millington will be filling in on Friday. And I'll be taking a three-day weekend. I have some comp time I'm going to be burning up, and then planning a vacation maybe a little later uh, sometime in the fall. But uh, in the meantime, Steve will be here Tuesday as part of his normal visit. And then next Friday, he will be filling in and hosting the show. Can I mention something quickly, too, as long as we're on that topic? It's 944 75. Bill Colley with you. News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I mentioned something earlier about there must be something strange in the air because people's reactions to the program lately leave me scratching my head. I've gotten a couple of those telephone calls on my outside line that is out at my desk the last few days. I go out after the show and I'll have a message from somebody who's just clearly, uh, you know, upset with me, and I'm wondering why. And a fellow called me, and I guess he was calling from Rupert the other day, and he said, first of all, I don't like the rhetoric you use on the air, but I listen every day. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> all right. Here's how you need to do the show. Although I listen every day, I get that a lot. I got that from a guy at a remote we were doing the other night, too. Well, you know, you need to do this, this, and this. Although I listen every day. Consultants would keep telling me, you know, do what you're doing and, and just and they'll keep listening every day if they already are, right? You know, that's, that's part of how it works. But uh, the, the guy said he was unhappy with my rhetoric and then he went on to basically complain about all the things I complained about that morning on the air. And I do admit I do a lot of complaining. What I normally do, though, most of my program is really devoted to just being a, a media critic because I think that a lot of media out there is uh, giving you a story that isn't the truth or at least it's half the truth or it's it's media trying to persuade you rather than inform you, persuade you to do what media would like you to do, and it isn't always necessarily uh, perhaps uh, matching your belief system. But then the caller was angry because he said, he said, uh, well, Steve Millington was in on his segment and you played a long sound, uh, sound bite with Chris Matthews, and then, then you wasted time by giving out your call letters and the temperature and the time, and then with just a minute left in the segment, you 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 selfish guy, you you asked a question to Steve Millington, giving him only a minute. Well, Steve Millington's segment technically runs from eight thirty until nine o'clock, and that predates me on this program. But Steve Millington gets bored with sitting in his truck in the parking lot, so he usually wanders into the studio at eight twenty. So he sits in here and gets his headset out and gets his papers out, and you know, and he gets everything ready for the eight thirty to nine o'clock segment. But you know, in radio, we've been trained since our young days, and I've only been doing it for 30 years. I didn't start yesterday. We've been trained in radio to give out our call letters a lot and give out the time and temperature a lot. Because a lot of times, especially in talk radio, a lot of people are running many of the same programs, many of the same syndicated programs. And people don't always know which station they're listening to as they're driving down the interstate, which is why you do that. It's to reinforce what people are listening to in that sense. But I didn't didn't selfishly li eliminate Steve from the conversation. It's just that I wanted to promote the fact that he was going to be up in the next half hour. So at about 827, I asked him a question, which he answered. And then a minute and a half later, we went to the break. And then he was here for the full half hour he was scheduled to be here. Does that make sense? But no, I do give out time and temperature. I realize that. I mentioned the call letters a lot because 
I'm told I'm supposed to do that. It's not an effort to try and, and take away time from a guest in the studio. And frankly, the reason I have Steve here is because he adds to the program. If I was selfish, I would tell him to go home. 948, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Telephone number to reach the program this morning is 736 0300. 736 0300. And you're up next. You're on air. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Uh, I just want to make a quick comment to you. I just want to thank you for what you do on radio, uh, your format. So many talk shows on radio. Uh, the host is all talking, but you, have, you give the community an opportunity to call in, ask questions, make comments, uh, whether you agree with them or not. I just want to say you're doing a great job, and you're a true American, and have a great day. Hey, thank you for the call. It's good hearing somebody finally say something nice. Talk shows are not all the same, obviously. And uh, I have a friend who's doing a talk show for a radio station over in that Burley Rupert area. Some of you know Zeb Bell. And uh, I love sometimes to sit down and listen to the YouTube videos that he posts after the show because he gets these great guests on who would be considered, I think, for a lot of people in, uh, in American life far right. But it's a wonderful thing to listen to Frosty Wildridge and some of these other guests now and then, which we don't necessarily get to hear from in most mainstream media. But Zeb has a different approach to what he's doing than I do. And Kevin Miller up in Boise, Kevin has a different approach than what I do. Completely different formatted show. And then you listen to the syndicated shows. How many times have you heard a guest on Rush Limbaugh's show? He actually had one a couple of weeks ago. She wrote a book about the war on police. Prior to that, he may have had Newt Gingrich on six months ago. I think I could count on both hands the number of times over the last quarter century I have heard guests on Rush's show. Rush's show. And it's just it's, 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 it's his, his approach. And she has it worked. I don't know, 600 radio stations and $50 million a year in profits <laughs> and salary. I don't know that I'd be able to tell him, Rush, you're doing it all wrong. I heard an interview that Rush did in 1990. There's a trade publication called Talkers Magazine, and Rush did an interview with a fellow who founded that magazine, and the guy stumbled across an old cassette of the interview a few days ago, and he posted the interview online. And Rush was saying, when I went to start doing talk radio in Sacramento, he said, I got there, and he said, talk radio had not really been very successful. AM radio was dying. Talk radio, everyone assumed that when you got on the air, you had to talk to somebody locally about the sewage system. So... People could ask questions of the uh, sewage treatment plant director and, uh, and this, you know, sewage commissioner. And, you know, so you could have all those details. And so you'd better understand how the sewage system works, et cetera. Well, that may have a place. And again, earlier I said, consultants are now telling you with all of the competition out there with 500 TV channels and the Internet and everything else, you know, you can't just be interesting every day. You've got to be compelling. So Limbaugh thought, well, wait a minute. What's really interesting to the largest number of people out there who are listening? It's, it's not always the sewage treatment plant or filling in potholes and the like. A lot of small-town radio stations. I had a friend who was working for a really small-town radio station in, in Wyoming, and um, their attitude is that's a good approach to radio, and yet they have problems attracting a listening audience. Oh, it, 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 you know, the, the guy who owns it's one of those locally-owned radio stations. They're few and far between. Um, you know, it's got a local owner who's, whose family has held the station for years, and God bless him for doing it. But unfortunately, he's just trying to impress the guys he knows from the country club. You know, I'll get you on the air. Don't worry about it, buddy. I'll get you on the air. But it doesn't necessarily mean everybody out there is going, wow, that is tremendous radio today. I'm glad he got the sewage treatment plant director on the air <laughs> because it's really exciting stuff to talk about sewage treatment. Now, granted, there are times when it's a big story, and it was a big story when the, there was the debate going on between Kimberly and Twin Falls, and there was a public vote on that. It was a huge story. But it's not because of the sewage and what's running through the pipes. It's because of the cost and the impact to people and the like. That's your approach with all of that. But Limbaugh was also asked by his program director, well, who are you going to have on as your guest today? Because in some people's minds, it's all about, well, you know, you should just be a human microphone stand and then just sit there and let the guests do all of the talking. Well, nobody's ever told me. They'll tell me, gee, I sure like your attitude on the air. But they never tell me, I like the attitude of all your guests. It doesn't come up, you know, like that. So Rush understood that early on. I mean, you know, and a lot of times he'll come on the air for three hours 
and he won't take a telephone call for the first two. He just gets on a roll, and he just starts going. And and you know what? It works because it's entertaining, and it's compelling, and he's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And the, the, the controversy comes, as he pointed out, out of the subject matter, if not necessarily out of him. And I think it's, a, it's, 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 it's worked, again, 600 radio stations. Hannity, on the other hand, has an entirely different approach. People say, oh, Lars Limbaugh spawned all of these imitators in syndication and in local radio. Not true. Everybody has their own unique style who's been doing it for any length of time. And Hannity is much more, I would say, he's much more a backer of the Republican Party, per se. Rush is just conservative ideals. Hannity makes mention of, well, I'm a member of the New York State Conservative Party and not the Republican Party any longer. But Sean is, he doesn't criticize a lot of Republicans, you know, in that sense, because Sean believes, well, it's still a better option than what we have with the alternatives out there. And he has a lot more guests. And Beck, I mean, Beck is a combination of not just talk show host, but preacher. And, and, and Beck is this guy who wears his emotions on his sleeves, and you can hear that in his show. So there's these multiple different approaches to it, and mine just happens to be mainly a focus on, on taking a look at media, showing you what media is all about, and whether they know it or not, pointing out the biases that are frequently there. Because if we can start breaking away, I know a lot of people who watched Ted Cruz the other night, and I heard their immediate responses, and I'm not telling you which which way they were talking or anything like this. But then a day later, their responses in many cases all seemed to be different because it was their reaction to media. And all of a sudden, media is reporting on it skewed, whether it be conservative media or mainstream media. And that's my point. you you got to make up your own mind. I watch a lot of TV news, and I read a lot of news on the Internet and in newspapers. And people give me a hard time sometimes on my Facebook page because I'll post a story. I'm voting for Donald Trump. Everyone's aware of that. I don't think anyone can be confused about it. But uh, Daniel Pipes, who wrote a story yesterday for Middle East Watch, saying he would not be voting for Trump, he did say I'm not voting for Hillary Clinton either. I posted that. Well, immediately, you know, hey, Billy boy, you better get with the program. What's the matter? You're no longer on the Trump bandwagon? Why? Because you don't agree with this guy? I post it there because I think it's worthwhile to hear that point of view. And I post a lot of stuff from the New York Times and the Washington Post as well, and I don't necessarily agree with it. I think a lot of it I post I post to show people how foolish it is. But I guess I'm supposed to put a comment there, you know, saying, did you see what this no good person said uh, every time I post something like that? But there's also a lot of that people are closing their own minds. Which is, which is bothersome, too, as well. Well, you know, we don't need to hear what they say at MSDNC. We don't need to uh, read what they say over there. You better be aware of it because there's a good portion of the population out there that's getting that, their news from only those sources. And if they're coming at you with their arguments, you better know where those arguments are coming from. And, and, and that, part of it, that part of it disturbs me because there are people out there who refuse to pay any attention to a source that is not in lockstep agreement with them. Well, sometimes you better be listening to the other side because if you're not, you won't know what they're plotting for you. Bill Colley with you this morning and just a couple of minutes to go before we wrap up the week on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, and, and I realize too, when I'm on the air, not everyone is going to be in agreement, uh, agreement with me. I remember being at an event one time and a guy came up and he says, Oh, I listen every day, but you know, I wish you'd tone it down. If I toned it down, it would be called, I don't know, Face the Nation. You ever watch those Sunday morning shows? Senator Bedfellow joins us today, and Senator Bedfellow is working on uh, uh, he is working on uh, SB 1910.3, uh, uh, which is the bill, of course, that will improve highway reconstruction across the country. First of all, Senator Bedfellow, uh, welcome here. And our first question to you is, who's going to be paying for the cost of all of the repaving of the interstate highway system? Wow. That's not what we're trying to do on the radio. We're trying to compel you to get up off your duff or to react or to call the show or to, uh, you know, to get you inflamed or whatever it can be. 
That's the whole point of it. And I know that the liberals out there don't like it, and they complain and bitterly and call my bosses and say, you need to fire him because he says stuff that I don't agree with. Well, so what? Uh, I listen to NPR, which my taxpayer dollars support, and I don't agree with that, but I'm not calling up NPR demanding they fire everybody I don't like. we got to call it a week. Uh, in fact, I'll see you Monday morning, God willing, at the Creek Don't Rise, between 8 and 10 o'clock uh, in, in the morning on uh, Monday. Hope you have a great weekend. Rush Limbaugh will follow this program next after the 10 o'clock Fox News. Sean Hannity following news at 1 o'clock from Fox. Glenn Beck after 4 o'clock news today. And, of course, Dave Ramsey tonight. In the meantime, we can all, I guess, uh, finally relax because that Republican convention is over. And uh, the ogres get together in Philadelphia next week. Oh, see, that's what we mean, Bill. Why would you have to say ogre? Oh, they just sound so... I'm sorry, people. I'm sick to death of the political correctness, and I hope the heck you are, too. Have a great weekend, as I said.